It is once again that time of year, everybody, where we do my favorite video on the channel, the one where I take no responsibility for the components that we are putting into today's build. This is the 2020 Viewer's Choice PC. Introducing Corsair's new 4000 series of cases, sporting your choice of understated front panel, tempered glass and RGB, or full mesh for max airflow. All the 4000 series options come with easy to use cable routing channels, tool-free tempered glass side panels, and feature Corsair's modern compact layout. The best part, they start at only 80 bucks. Check out the link below or head to Corsair.com to learn more. As we get started here, guys, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you wanna see more of this kind of PC build content. And also consider following me on Twitter at BPS underscore customs, because that's where I run all of the polls that determine what this build is actually going to look like. I do this every year in December, and this is the fourth iteration of our viewer's choice PC. The very first one to be mini ITX. That was actually the second poll in our viewer's choice PC build for this year. And it gave you the option of a mini ITX system, a micro ATX system, an ATX mid tower system, or an ATX full tower system. And the votes were actually pretty well spaced out with mini ITX coming out on top. Now, I wanted to put together a system like you guys wanted. Unfortunately, I don't have a huge selection of mini ITX chassis in office right now that I haven't built with before. I actually only had two. So I asked you guys if it was okay if I picked the case for our mini ITX system, and this is what we went with. This is NZXT's H210i. It is maybe a little bit larger than your normal mini ITX build, but it's really still fairly small. And one of the things that I like about the way NZXT has put this together is that it affords the compatibility with normal size components. So that's an ATX power supply, a regular size graphics card, full tower air coolers, etc. Plus I think it looks pretty good too with its black and white aesthetic and we're gonna play off of that with the rest of our components. And it has the intelligent smart controller in the back that's going to allow us to plug up some additional accessories. So for the rest of our components and to see what you guys chose, let's head into my office and pull a bunch of parts off the shelf and then we'll get this build rocking and rolling. So here's our store that we're gonna go shopping in according to what you guys have chosen for our viewer's choice PC. The very first question was relating to platform and to absolutely nobody's surprise, you guys chose AMD mainstream as what you wanted to build with. And then we're gonna jump ahead a couple questions because I asked you which processor you wanted to use. And the Ryzen 5 5600X actually won out, beating out the higher core count, higher performing chips, which I think is really interesting because it kind of speaks to what you guys want to see and what you guys want to compare to uh, when it comes to what you might build in a system moving forward. So here is our Ryzen 5 5600X unused still sealed this will be the first time i'm using this chip six cores and 12 threads and uh, you guys know by now this is an excellent gaming processor and it's going to be a great way to start our build surprisingly though when it came to form factor and i asked you what kind of system you wanted to build you chose mini itx which was really cool i don't think i've ever done a viewer's choice pc that was mini itx before and then we're going to jump ahead again a couple of questions where i asked you which motherboard you wanted to use and the results were the B550 Strix board, which I don't remember where I put it. Hold on. There it is. Asus ROG Strix B550i Gaming. This is a really cool mini ITX board, and it looks really neat too. The next decision to be made was about cooling. How are we going to cool our 5600X? And I gave you guys three choices, custom loop, AIO, or air cooler and air cooler was the winner. Now, because we're using a mini ITX system, even though it's a fairly large mini ITX enclosure, we still do have some space restrictions. So we can't use anything gigantic like the Dark Rock Pro 4 or something like that. But I do have a couple of other options that we could pick from. So we have the Scythe Fuma 2. We have the Noctua NH-U12S Chromax. Then we have the new one from Cool Master, the Hyper 212 Evo V2. I think in this situation, given our the coloring of our case uh, and the space restrictions, I want something that's fairly slim. I'm gonna go with the Noctua. So 
the uh, the NHU 12s is a fairly slim tower air cooler with a really good amount of cooling potential and um, it looks pretty good too because it's all black so there it is NHU 12s yeah this should do nicely now we come to probably the most difficult decision that we've made in this build and that is graphics cards initially I gave you guys the option of me building with something on my shelf or if seeing if we could potentially put something together that you could actually buy right now and that is a hugely difficult proposition everything is just sold out everywhere the initial vote said and I gave you the option of do you want me to build with something that you can buy and when the answer came back yes I tried to find something that was reasonable reasonably priced and available that we could use and it just didn't happen so unfortunately we are gonna have to use something that it might be difficult for you guys to find on store shelves right now and when I ran that poll back again the answer that you guys wanted to see was a 3060 Ti so the only 3060 Ti that I have right now is this one from Gigabyte it is their Eagle um, Eagle 8G so uh, yeah I've never used this card and it'll be a really nice combination with our 5600X, I think. This is the kind of, this is the tier of gaming system that a lot of people are gonna be able, oh my God, that a lot of people are probably looking to put together, assuming they could actually find this stuff available. So, it'll be interesting to see how it performs. The next question was about color and cables, and specifically about what color extensions you guys wanted to see in our black and white system. You guys chose white, so let me pull down my cable extensions bin up there and uh, grab a set of white cables. This should do very nicely. This is all we need. We got a 24 pin. We've got an eight pin PCIe, because our GPU only uses single eight pin. And then we've got a single eight pin EPS and uh that's about it so yeah these are from cable mod these are their pro cables with the aluminum white combs they look pretty cool and uh i think these are gonna make our system really stand out next up was memory and i gave you guys a couple different options here uh white or black uh two by eight or two by 16 and you guys chose two by 16 white and I think that I actually only have one kit of memory that fits within those parameters, and that's a Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB kit. And there they are. Oh. Come on, guys, get out of there. So this is DDR4-3200, and I think that although we might be able to get a tiny, tiny boost in performance by going with 3600 speed memory, uh, I think this is going to do just fine, and it looks really cool too. Hopefully it fits with our air cooler. Very quickly, and something that I did not have you guys vote on, we still do need a power supply, and uh, the one I want to use is actually from NZXT. They had sent this over to me, and I haven't yet used it. This is their C850, uh, 80 plus gold rated, fully modular. It's black. I don't know. Looks fine. It's a power supply. It works. Yay. I'm also going to pick out a couple extra fans for this build. Um, because we're using the H210i, oh my god, how do I do this with one hand, uh, which has the integrated controller, I want to use a couple of these NZXT Air RGB2 fans, which will plug right up to that and look pretty cool in the build. The last thing we're going to need is storage, but I actually have an M.2 drive that I want to use uh, out, out there uh, in my filming set, so uh, let's not worry about that for now. But you will see it in the build montage. So that's it guys, we are all done choosing our parts for the Viewer's Choice PC 2020, or rather, you guys are all done choosing the parts. Now it's time for me to get to work and put it together and see how it performs.
it turns out, you guys are pretty smart. This is an awesome gaming PC, and even though it uses quote unquote mid-range parts, I guess when you're evaluating the stack of AMD processors and the stack of NVIDIA GPUs, the 5600X and the 3060 Ti are mid-range. But there's really nothing mid-range about their performance when you put them together. The 3060 Ti is basically the equivalent of an RTX 2080 Super, which just two-ish months ago was one of the best GPUs that you could actually purchase. I ran all of our tests on this system in 1440p and at ultra settings. And even though some of the games are a little convoluted when it comes to those actual ultra quality settings because things like Cyberpunk have so many variables that you can tweak, I tried to make it so that the games were performing at their highest quality that they could at 1440p. Now, obviously when it comes to Cyberpunk, I did engage DLSS because if you're playing that game and you wanna get the best visual experience that you can, and you're using an NVIDIA GPU, you must turn on DLSS. I run an RTX 3090 in my main PC, and when I'm gaming, I turn on DLSS so that I can hit almost 60 FPS at 4K. That game is just crazy resource intensive, and even when we're playing only 1440, in order to get some playable frame rates, DLSS is a must. So let's talk about that game first. I set everything to as high as it could go, within reason, I did not use Psycho on any of the settings that afforded it, but I did set ray tracing to ultra, and then I put DLSS on auto, which means that sometimes it will be rendering the scene at a lower resolution in order to get your performance up to where it should be. Overall, the game was running in the mid 40s, around 45 to 47 FPS a lot of the time, and I was testing it during a pretty intense interior warehouse kind of battle scene. So. Likely, you'll probably get maybe a little bit higher frame rates than this if you're using my same settings and this GPU-CPU combination. But overall, Cyberpunk, obviously, as you guys know by now, extremely difficult to run, and not a game that needs 60, 90, 120 frames per second to be enjoyable. You can definitely play it at 45 to 60 FPS and be just fine, because a lot of the times people are kind of in it for the visuals and the combat isn't too, too fast. So 45 FPS actually felt fine, and the game was definitely playable. When it came to our other testing, I ran four other benchmarks. So that's Metro Exodus, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Doom Eternal, and Ghost Recon Wildlands. I keep Ghost Recon Wildlands in my testing suite because it is very difficult to run, and we'll take a look at that one first. This was run DX11, 1440p, ultra high settings, and it came out to an average of 61.73 frames per second. Doom Eternal was up next, and that game just runs on a potato. 1440p, ultra nightmare settings, 180 frames per second on average or thereabouts. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I let it run the entire benchmark. This again was on the highest preset, which is equivalent to ultra. 1440p, no DLSS or other ray tracing features were enabled. Came out to about 98 frames per second on average. And then Metro Exodus. This is a game that does take advantage of ray tracing features and DLSS, and I was using neither of those just to see what the pure rasterizing performance was. And at 1440p and ultra settings, 64.29 frames per second in this game. Now, when it comes to this build itself, NZXT cases over the years have evolved to the point where I am very familiar building in them. A lot of times the build experiences between their different lines are very similar because the construction is very similar. And this is no exception. It is a slightly larger mini ITX chassis, but it affords you a lot of luxuries that you don't get in those tiny cases. And I really did enjoy building in this. You saw basically the entire build time lapse. It is not a difficult proposition at all. And everything came out looking really good. All the lighting, including the air fans, are hooked up to the included smart controller, so that does tidy up the wiring somewhat in the back. You don't have to add on for another controller. The GPU fit really well. One thing that I will say is that Gigabyte's RGB Fusion software is just trash. I, I don't know what is wrong with it. Recently, they haven't updated it at all, but I can't even get it to recognize its own GPU. And as a result, I couldn't change the lighting effect. I mean, it's on kind of like a light blue, which almost kind of goes with our the rest of our white lighting that we had set up here, but I would have liked to change it to white if possible. And I, I don't know, RGB Fusion just won't see the Gigabyte GPU, which 
I don't, I don't understand. Now, as far as temperatures and noise, noise wise, this is pretty quiet, but this is not a sound damped case. So when the fans do ramp up when you're gaming, you do hear it a little bit. It's not overly distracting and it's not one of the louder cases that I've used. So I say on the acoustic front, this is fine. Temperatures wise, the CPU actually was staying around 61 to 62 degrees when running Cinebench, which is perfectly acceptable, especially for a tower air cooler, very simple cooling setup. However, the GPU did get kind of toasty. I looped heaven for a little while just to see what would happen with GPU thermals. Ended up in the mid 80s, so 84, 85 degrees Celsius after maybe about 10 minutes of looping heaven. And as a result, the clocks came down quite significantly. Initially, it was boosting up over 1900 megahertz and it settled around 1700 megahertz. So if that's the case, when you're gaming for anything more than you know 10 minutes, your performance is gonna come down some. So just be aware of that. And that's more a function of the layout of this case with the large power supply shroud, not able to allow a lot of airflow in and around that GPU because the GPU draws air up through those fans and if you have a large piece of metal blocking that, well, then you're kind of out of luck. But if you guys noticed during the build montage, I did relocate our two included fans from the rear and the top to the front of the case to allow air intake. And then I swapped in the air fans as exhaust. So you have the air fans on top and in the rear blowing the air out. And then you have the two included NZXT fans blowing air in. And that's basically the best airflow setup that you're gonna get in a case like this. But 2020 is just about done. This is the last full build that you guys will see here on the channel for this year, but that's only another week or so, so don't fret. But this one came out great. And just like previous year's viewers choice PCs, you guys know what's up. Clearly you picked some really cool components and stuff that would go well together. The combination of 5600X and 3060Ti, once things come back into stock, I am absolutely positive will be the basis for a ton of builds. The enthusiasm for the mid-range at this point is kind of off the charts considering now that mid-range means an excellent gaming experience and in this case a really good build experience a really good aesthetic experience a really good acoustic experience basically everything about this build was almost exactly as i would have designed it myself and you guys did an amazing job thank you so much for your participation in this kind of a project i really appreciate it and thank you so much for watching bps customs in 2020 hope to see you guys here next year take care